Hello, I'm Enter Elysium, and we're playing Dwarf Fortress. Now, Dwarf Fortress is a completely free game, and is one of the, probably the main game that inspired RimWorld. So, some of you might know it, some of you might not. Basically, it's a game where you create a world, then you can choose to either adventure in the world, which isn't as good, in my opinion, as the main mode, and the main mode, of course, being you build a fortress. Dwarf Fortress, kind of in the name. So, what we'll do first of all is we'll create a world. Now, as I'm going to discuss this, I'm going to talk about what I'm doing. I'm also going to go through in very, very minute detail, when I remember, of course, um, all the actions that I'm doing and why I'm doing them. So, welcome to the Alpha to a Fortress, blah, blah. Uh, basically, what we're currently playing, by the way, is point thirty-four, which is the 2012 release. The 2014 release is out now. I was going to wait and cover it, but I kind of got the urge to cover this one. Uh, the reason I'm not covering the 2014 release is none of the mods have been updated, and we will be using mods. So I'm actually recording in a different bit of a different setup to usual. I have all the mods and so on ready to go. As you can see, all these different things popping up. Now this, by the way, is sound sense. It adds a load of uh, new sounds and stuff. Basically, it'll listen to the game when the game passes something, and it goes, oh, there's a sound for that. It'll play a sound. It's currently updating. I don't tend to have it when I play it, but a lot of you might want it. So I've, I've uploaded it, and I'm, I'm playing with it for now. I'm actually going to minimise it. It won't be working until it's downloaded though. So just to give you an idea of how to play the game. You will of course need the Lazy Noob Pack. Which is, I think it's now called the DF Starter Pack. Uh, you can get it, I'll probably put a link down below. It is only available as a download from the Dropbox, which isn't working at the moment because it exceeded its bandwidth, or as a torrent file. The torrent file actually downloads pretty damn fast, so I'd recommend you go that route and download it from there. I am playing it with a couple of things changed, so I'm playing with population cap, child cap enforced, invaders, cave-ins, temperature, weather, blah blah blah, everything basically on. I'm placing, playing it with aquifers off though. Aquifers, if you're playing it for the first time, Dwarf Fortress, you don't want aquifers on. If you're playing it for about the 20th time, you still don't want aquifers on. Well, aquifers are, it's basically underground water, and it means that when you dig down, your base will flood. Uh, yeah, not really something you desperately want to happen. You can get around it a few ways if you're like a super pro. I am not a super pro, and I'm going to assume that most of you aren't super pros either at Dwarf Fortress. So I'm turning it off. It's going to stay off. We have also an autosave yearly and a couple of other things. Now, I'm hoping autosave yearly is fine. Years are pretty long. Uh, you can save any time, but you have to leave the game to save. So I won't be automatically saving. I'll just let it save every year and hope that that suffices. It is fairly stable. The, the new version of 2014 is still going through its stability increasing phase. And of course, you know, until it gets to that point and it's stable, the mods can't really be fully updated for it. So we're going to play this uh, old version. The old version is pretty much fine. The main uh, in, like things introduced by the new version 2014 were basically things for adventure mode. There were a couple of small things and... One of them is climbing, and which is pretty damn important. But other than that, it's mostly adventure mode. We're also playing with graphics. We have the Iron Hand texture pack installed. Uh, the Iron Hand texture pack is the one I've been using for ages. You can play with stuff like the default ASCII, which is just ASCII art. Um, honestly, really hard to get into, and also really hard to watch on YouTube. So that's why I'm not playing with ASCII art. Uh, I prefer playing it with a texture pack, and I like Iron Hand. Utilities, we've got Dwarf Therapist open and Sound Sense. Sound Sense, of course, is updating. Dwarf Therapist allows you to manage jobs for your dwarves. Of course, there aren't any dwarves at the moment, so it's not got any there. But by default, it also opens a couple of other things. So if we have a look at here, this is the DF hack, which allows you to do a couple of more advanced things. It also allows you to do a few cheaty things, which we won't be doing. I don't really want to use it for cheating. I want to use it for the kind of advanced abilities to be able to sort stuff that base door fortress gets wrong and also patch a couple of the bugs that are still wrong in the 2014 version they haven't been fixed so i think dwarf fortress definitely needs df hack uh honestly I, I would recommend playing with the mods and if you don't play the mods then you're either very very brave and insane or just insane so right for our creator world we want a, a medium world will do uh medium history number of civilizations um let's go high Number of sites, um, high number of beasts. You can put this on low for a first time if you want to be very careful. Savagery, said again, you can put that on low. Mineral occurrence, we'll put that on frequent. Now, if it's your very first time, I'd recommend you putting these on low. That way, you know, you're not going to be attacked by beasts. And savagery is basically sort of wildness and so on. Also, very good to put it on low. I'm going to probably leave it just medium for now. Uh, so we've got a medium world. With medium length of time, 
high number of civilizations, high number of sites, uh, sort of biomes, locations, stuff like that, and also things to do in adventure mode, not as important for fortress mode, and a medium number of beast savagery, and a frequent mineral occurrence. Let's go. And it'll now generate. Now, this is a beautiful map. As you can see, it's currently forming lakes and minerals. So, as you can see, we've got uh, a few different continents. Also, that little red trap icon that we just saw that's down the bottom now. I believe that will probably be a volcano. That's one of the few times you can actually get magma before you have to drill down all the way to find magma down below. Because you can find it on a volcano or near a volcano. I, of course, will not be going there because it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. So, we're currently in the Age of Myth, which is uh, year 40. Got historical figures, 9,000. The one thing about this game is it generates an entire backstory. And you can use the Legends view, which is also uh, bundled with the uh, DF starter thing, the Lazy New Pack. To actually look at all of these different legends and follow them through. You can use once in-game. It's a little bit more... Uh, less intuitive. The one big problem about D Dwarf Fortress is... It has the most atrocious UI imaginable. You have not had a UI like this. I might complain about small UI bugs in big AAA games or whatever. Dwarf Fortress basically has pretty much almost no UI. It does have a UI. I'll give it that. It does. But it really doesn't have much of one. So we're getting up to the year 92 and it slowed down a bit because of the number of historical figures. And you see things like the events, there are now about one, 130,000 separate events that have happened in the life of this place. All the different people interacting and so on. And almost 8,000 people have died over the course of the 100 years it's been around. The purple uh, icons and stuff are, I think that's evil and stuff. So there's that purple eye you might be able to see down to the, uh, move the cursor down here. That is, I believe, a Necromancer's Tower. It's either that or that. I think it's that one's a Necromancer's Tower. And in Adventure Mode, you can actually go to a Necromancer's Tower and try and fight your way in and then uh, become a Necromancer by finding the book that belongs to the Necromancer at the top of the tower. However, they're incredibly difficult fights. So Adventure Mode, you know, you get those amusing things, but Adventure Mode is a little bit more difficult to get into. And it is, it is fairly limited by the number of interactions you can have and gets a little bit samey sometimes. But it's also very, very difficult to get into because of the, the sheer variety of stuff you can do. Uh, the simple task of putting a sword in your bag to pick something up and then put that thing into a bag which you put in your backpack is is a long and laborious process. So we're now up to the year 135? A lot of dead people. 31,000 historical figures. The Age of Heroes still lingers on. As you can see, it actually rejected two regions at the top because they just weren't suitable. So once it's done that, it's gone through and done all the other things. Now, this episode is actually going to be episode naught, so we're actually going to mostly talk about uh, starting off and what we're going to do, and then also picking our site and then equipping our dwarves for going to their fortress. So if you're not interested in that, I, I guess, you know, just skip the episode. Episode one will actually be, you know, our digging and making a, a dwarf fortress, hopefully not getting killed pretty much right away. That would be awkward. Um, but if you actually want to, you know, follow more in depth, then definitely want to watch this video just to be able to, you know, how to get started. Right, so we are still in the Age of Heroes. Now, things like the Age of Heroes and stuff, they're definitions for periods based on a certain number of factors. I think Age of Heroes is, uh, there are certain beasts around and there are a lot of civilizations rising up fighting the beasts in, in theory. Um, there are other things that can happen, like you can get Dead Ages and so on, um, where basically people have just died out. I think there's the Age of, is it the Age of Myth or something? Yeah, where like over 90% or something of... Uh, mythical creatures have been killed off and people are around and so on and basically the creatures have become a myth. No, oh, it's made of myth when they've all been killed off. It's the age of legend is where they're rare or something. I can't remember the names and the, the specific instances that they applied to are a little bit a bit beyond me actually. I will of course be playing this with a web browser open because even I'm going to get stuck sometimes. I've played this a few times and I left it for about a year and I've come back recently. I've played a couple more games. But sometimes there are problems that you need to look on the wiki for. That said, it does have an amazing wiki. The wiki is very well documented. It has pages for each different version of the game. There's not a lot of difference between uh, you know the modern version and the version uh, from 2012, which is the one we're playing. Not a lot have happened differently in uh, in Fortress mode. So... Hopefully, it should pretty much all be the same. Right, so as you can see, all these little train tracks and so on, things that look like train tracks at least, they are roads. 
blue ones are rivers and so on. I think that they're this blue stuff here, this solider blue stuff is um solider, more solid blue stuff is like a major river as opposed to being, you know, just a normal river or whatever. Uh this is a dwarf fortress, this little um statue I icon. And these wells and stuff are towns, and I believe that is village. Not certain on that one. There's a lot of evil up there. That doesn't look nice. I think this is a desert, maybe down here. And what are you? Are you a town of some kind? Hmm. These these bits here, these are pretty obviously mountain ranges. Uh, you probably already guessed that. Sort of an up arrow, being sort of brownish grey. In the middle of a continent, you probably guessed that one already. So yeah, that is in fact a mountain range. As you can see, our dwarfs are sitting in the mountain range. And as you can see up here, that's I think ice or sort of sort of very very cold climate. Oh, and that's probably a, a wood of some kind or forest. Right. So we have generated our world. Uh, oh, there's an island over there. Basically, an evil island. That's very nice. Uh, Age of Heroes, 250 years old. Lots of stuff happened. Seems fine to me. Looks like a nice world. We'll take it. So, you press enter to accept. And it's just going to save the world. Now, it's basically no impact on the GPU, but it has a massive impact on the CPU. And it, it's not, co like, done for cores and so on, so it doesn't understand, like, uh, multi-threading and so on. It, it works with one core, really. If I pull up my own stats for my cores, I'll see... Yep. My other cores are being hit. Fairly hard, but uh, the first core is just being absolutely offloaded by this when it's running. So it's just saving that out. As you can see at the top, we have an FPS. The first one is, of course, the FPS it's running at for working tasks and so on. The second one is the graphical FPS. Uh, I've actually got the graphical FPS capped at 30 for videos because I record at a 30 FPS frame rate because that's what YouTube uses. Although, you know, the 60 FPS will be coming. And we can go start playing, create a new world, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go start playing. You can go Dwarf Fortress, you can go Adventure, or you can go Legends. So if we actually have just a quick look in Legends. Come on, load up. There we go. It's going to load the historical things. And you can look around. You can look at, say, let's look at a historical figure. Um, Zebu Gabu X Gabu Zen Akul Segu Segul Sweet scorched, sweet searched, sweat searched, sweat searched to the quest of belches. Oh, that's what her last bit translates into. So Sabu, Zebu is her name, and then sweat searched the quest of belches. Who she was a female Hydra. She died in the year forty four. And if we hit enter, you can see all the information about her. So in the first, Zebu settled in the strategic jungle. She became an enemy of the Notched Vale, became an enemy of the Coast of Grasp, devoured a water buffalo bull of the Notch Vale, blah, 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 blah. And then if we go down far enough, we should see that she was killed off. She was struck down by the elf Vivenna Flower Named in the Strategic Jungle after being confronted by her. Although Zebu, you know, ambushed the human and killed the human and many other things of killing people became an enemy, attacked the elf... The, ooh, the elf nine music wonders who she attacked. Fourth toe, right foot was torn off by Zebu. Okay, so the Hydra attacked her and ripped off her toe and then struck her down. Right, okay, she did get killed. She she died. And then ate her. Well, that was nice. And you can see here we have related enemies, uh, related entities who are mostly enemies. Uh, ten notable kills, eight other kills, so she got 18 kills in total. So, right, if we go X escape to back up. You can also see a number of other information. We can go chase down people and so on, but I think that's enough for that. Let's start playing. So, we want to go Dwarf Fortress. In Ceritalia for Folder 1, or whatever it was. So, here we go. As you can see, we have a local, a region, and a world view. Although that looks very odd. That we've got this, this strange ocean tile here, and then next to it, another ocean tile, and it's moving with us. I have no idea what that is. I assume that's a glitch. Yep, it looks like... Right, this is the ASCII art, I think, and this is the tile. It looks like the ASCII art is being applied to one side, on, uh, one side only. And we've got the tile here, which is weird. I haven't had this bug before. 
Oh, well, things you find out when you try, right? So let's also look for an embark site. So we're going to use F to find desired location. I'm going to change the dimensions to 4 and 4. Savagery, um, I guess, I don't mind a medium savagery, right? If you're starting off the first time, I'd guess, say, a low savagery. Evil, we will have a low one just because, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to watch things happen and not get killed, certainly very early on, which might happen in a, especially in a, a high evil environment. It's very tough. So elevation, I don't care about elevation. Temperature, you will want a medium temperature. At low temperature, you will get things like water freezing, and then you won't be able to get water for your dwarves, which is okay. Sometimes dwarves um, tend to drink mostly alcoholic beverages, but certainly injured dwarves need water to be able to clean their wounds and so on. Rain, drainage, flux stone. You will need flux stone to make steel, so I'm going to set flux stone to yes. Aquifer to no. River, um... Yeah, let's have a river. Rivers are nice. Shallow metals, we want multiple. Deep metals, we want multiple. Soil, some, deep. Deep is very helpful. Soil is very quick to mine through, and it also means that you can put, like, farms and stuff on soil. You can't do it on, of course, on stone. You have to try and get the stone wet to put mud onto it, if that's the case. So we're going to go for some soil. And uh, I don't mind about clay. And let's enter to do search. And what it's going to do now is search for everything, and you see lots of red X's, which is no. Wow, it really, really doesn't like uh, the parameters we've given it. Hopefully we'll find something. Right. Almost done. As you see at the top, we have a massive ice sheet. So, where's our mouse cursor? There. You can see this massive ice sheet over here. And... We have searched the world. Seems good to me. Let's go escape to browse results. So, if we go, um, we should be able to find, ah, stop blinking at me. Hmm, we need to find a nice place. I'm trying to think of a good place to go, actually. There is a nice little spot up here. Hmm, actually, this seems to be right next to... I think this is, is a... Is, I think it's an elvish colony, maybe? Warm, thickly forested, thick vegetation. You do want heavily forested or similar for your trees. You want a lot of wood. It'd be difficult if you don't have that. Uh, very deep soil, great. Shallow metal, singular, not great. Deep metals, good. Flux stone, good. Um, plural, plural. No flux stone. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we pick something a little bit lower down. So there is the coast here. Now, not being next to. Oh, that's not great either. Let's go nearer, nearer a mountain. We are dwarves after all. There is, of course, a neck around this town nearby, which isn't great. Surroundings, calm. Calm's quite nice. Warm, heavily forested, thick. Some metal. Shallow metals. Soil.
Right, so that's not great. I do want to have some Fluxstone, preferably. Deep soil, shallow metals. Duh, 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 duh. I guess we can get by without Fluxstone. Very deep soil, shallow metals. Uh, hot. No, I don't want hot. That's very hot. Right. Um... What about here? Is here hot? Warm, thickly forested, thick. It's got a brook. No, that's actually another place that's already covered in uh, what, what seems to be some sort of elvish area. I guess we've got maybe too many civilizations. Right, what have we got here? Shallow metals, deep metals, flux stone. Surroundings, untamed wilds. Ooh. That is a little bit risky. Trees none. No, that's not acceptable. We need trees. Right. Hmm. Right. So what we've got is very deep soil. And then when we get suddenly to... We've got shallow metals. Deep. Since we get to the flux stone, we go to little soil. Some soil and clay is okay. It's not the best, though. What have we got down here? We've also got a, quite a high savagery. Very deep soil. That's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. Very deep soil, shallow metals, deep metals, flux stone. Brook, a stream. But it's still untamed wilds. Now, untamed wilds means, I think, high savagery, low evil. So it should, in theory, be okay-ish. Uh, we will get a load of enemies attacking us, but they won't be evil and there won't be, like, many of them. And there'll mostly be things like, I don't know, some sort of animal people. We'll see. I, I guess we'll go there. Um, I'm getting rather nauseous from all this very flashy red. So, clay, very deep style. Um... As you can see, the in the local view, by the way, that blinking green area is the green area we can start off in. We can't start off over in that g gold area because I believe that is another settlement. So we're going to be starting there. Right, so we have a stream. Untamed wilds, thick, heavily forested, warm, very deep soil, clay, shallow metals, deep metals, and flux stone. E to embark. Nope, we cannot embark because we don't have enough room, it looks like. Okay, we're going to have to try and find this Fluxstone area again. Nope, I don't believe we can actually get there. Oh, we can get there. Clay, very deep soil. Shallow metals, deep metal, Fluxstone. Warm, heavily forested, thick, untamed wilds. Yeah, we can just about fit in there. So, E embark. Yes, I would like to embark there, right. You can either hit play now, which will start off with the default stuff, or you can prepare for this journey carefully, or you can use a pack that's already here. Now, I'm going to go for the prepare for this journey carefully to show you what that's about. So, right, what we're first we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our stuff. As you can see, we've got some copper picks. We have a copper battle axe. We've got two of them, actually. Now, copper battle axes can be used as weapons. But you can use them to cut down trees, and that's the main purpose of having axes at the beginning to cut down trees. You can use a wooden training axe, actually, to cut down a tree. However, it doesn't make a weapon. Um, so I'm thinking we drop that down. Use plus and minus to change the amounts, because it's costing us 68 bits of whatever, I don't know, points. Um, and I think we'll get a training axe of some kind. So hit new, which is N, we go to training weapons, and we find a manga wood training axe. Palm training axe. Um, I don't know, I, I like the idea of a mango, ooh, no, it's a pine. I do like pine. Pine always looks good. Mango wood sounds sexy, but pine is a nice word, so we go pine. And you see it's 17 as opposed to 68. Nice saving there. You want to start off with at least 60 units of alcohol, so we've got some rum and beer. Uh, we could also get some wine as well. You want to start off with plump helmet spawn. I would want to start off with more than just five, so let's increase that. By the way, use plus and minus to go, you know, increase your amounts and use your arrow keys to move around. So I'm going to increase that to 15. Pigtail seeds, cave root seeds, rock uh, nuts and sweet pod seeds. Dimple cut spawn. 
mule sweetbread, cave fish, plump helmets. These will be used for food or for brewing. Um, that seems okay to me. I would probably want a bit more bread or meat of some kind. So actually, let's just increase the variety. So let's get some more meat. Wombat tripe is two per unit. Um, prepared king snake intestines. Well, that sounds lovely. Let's get some of them. So I want another maybe 15 of that. How many points have we got left? Plenty. We've got left plenty. Um, some thread, some cloth, some bags, some rope. Sounds good to me. Quiver. I don't really think I need that much in the way of... Uh, we don't have any bows or anything, do we? Do we have an anvil? We need an anvil, right? Because you cannot make an anvil without an anvil. So you'd end up... If you don't take an anvil, you have to trade for one. So we need an anvil. We've got that. Uh, can we have a wheelbarrow? Do we have a wheelbarrow? No. Wheelbarrow just speeds up moving things around. So... Uh, cedarwood wheelbarrow sounds good to me. Let's get one of them. And what else do we want? I think maybe dogs and cats and some other sort of, uh, you know, food animals. I do actually like taking, um... Yeah, let's, let's get ourselves two female dogs and a male dog. That way we've got some breeding going on. Um, what else do we want? Let's take some cats. Now, I'm thinking... Just male cats at the moment. Two male cats, because I don't want cats breeding. Because the problem with cats breeding is people get attached to cats, and then when a cat dies, they make people really sad. And cats breeding can cause multiple people to get attached to cats. When the cats die, people get sad. It, it can cause a, a phenomenon known as a cat explosion, which just ends up with a spiral of, you know, sadness inside your thought, and then people going crazy. Uh, it's actually a thing. We could get things like um, sheep. However, I'm going to skip them, because they're very expensive at 51 and I'm going to go with hens. So I'm going to get three hens and a rooster. There's six each and they do produce eggs, which is always good. And then we can get some other things that we can eat. I'm going to skip through the expensive ones. And I am I tend to like going with rabbits. They don't eat much grass, so you can have a fairly small plot for them to graze in. And, uh, well, they breed like rabbits. And they're really, really cheap. So, there we go. We've got two cats. We've got three dogs, including breeding. We have four chickens, including breeding. And we have four rabbits, including breeding. Breathing? Breeding. All right, so if we go tab back to dwarves, we've got Onal Dandog, who's a peasant. Oh, he's a peasant because we haven't given any stats. Untush Legobishol. Lintash Wifnekas. I'm not going to bother saying all these names. Suffice to say, they are people. And what we need definitely is maybe someone who's an, a decent miner of some kind. So, I tend to think adequate miner. I think that's what the tutorial on the wiki says, and I, I tend to think that's fine. We also need someone with a wood working skills, I believe. So, we give him stuff like uh, carpenter and so on. I think a novice carpenter is fine. Then we need someone with woodcutter, furnace operator, wood burner, stuff like that. Um, I'm actually just going to think maybe just woodcutter is fine, just to be able to cut down the trees quicker. So woodcutter. Yes, there are a lot of skills, by the way, as you probably noticed. Where's woodcutter? It's at the top, isn't it? You're a novice. Yeah. So by the way, increasing skills, again, is just the plus and minus keys. And then going up and down and sideways is with the arrow keys. So your carpenter, your cutter. We also need, I think, someone who can do stone, someone who can do stuff to do with jewels, someone who can fish, and possibly someone with um, some other stuff. Hmm. I'm trying to think right because we do need someone who can do. The talky skills. Yeah, right. Also, one person I definitely like to have is... I think it comes under Stone Crafter. How much does that cost us in points? So not 108. And if we make him proficient... I think we can't go any higher on him. Because we don't have enough points. The last point cost us... 9. Okay, no, actually, we can't... We, can we go any higher? 
No, they're just limited at the beginning, right? Efficient stone crafter, because one of the things we're going to do is we're going to make a lot of stone, uh, you know, trinkets and so on. And normally I go with stone mugs just because oh, they're fairly easy to find. They go in the finished goods bin, uh, as opposed to, I believe, the other thing you make, which is crafts, which uh, you can use to sell and nothing else, really. They go in the finished goods bin as well, except they come in several different flavors and finding them is more difficult, whereas mugs are always mug. So what else do we need? We need um, someone with... Yeah, someone with the ability to be our hospital dude. So wound dresser, diagnostician, surgeon, bone doctor, sutra. And we need someone who can be our, I think it's judge of intent, appraiser, organizer, records keeper. I don't think we need anything else for him. He's going to basically be our bookkeeper, so he's going to keep track, which is why we have things like records keeper and organizer. And appraiser and judge of intent are so he can negotiate better when we're doing our trading. Got 28 points left. Who else could we do with? Um, Mason's tempting, but not necessary. Fisherman. Let's make a novice fisherman, I guess. Oh, no, no. We could do a brewer. Yeah, make you a novice brewer. Let's go back to our items. Like, we can afford 23 more points of items. Go new. So, how do we go new? We have to go back to there before we can go new. Yeah. And what do you have in the way of weapons? Can we afford a copper crossbow? Yes, we can. Let's take a copper crossbow, just in case, right? That, that is like our just in case. We are going into savage wilds. You'd normally be okay, and copper bolts. It's rather expensive at two per pop. I'd have to take something away to really get enough bolts to make this worthwhile. Um, is there anything I can drop? I actually want another pick, though. Another pick is very, very tempting. Another pick was 22. Hmm. It's like a, a, a rabbit is the same cost as a crossbow. It's kind of a lot. And we've got no one with crossbow use. I guess we're just going to have to hope. We do have our... Right, how do we get rid of that? Um, decrease the amount, decrease the amount. And if we go back up to our copper picks, increase the amount. Can we... Oh, it's 44 each, not in total. Okay, right. So we've got 23 left, and I think that's probably best spent on maybe some more plump helmet spawn. Let's get ourselves some dwarven bit uh, wine. So, wine, dwarven wine, sounds perfect to me. Let's get ourselves ten units of wine. Oh, I can't afford ten units of wine. Nine units of wine seems fine to me. And we've got a nice variety of food and so on. Perfect. So we can name the fortress. Control, uh, not control, shift F. By the way, when you see something like that which says higher uh, uppercase F, that means shift F. So shift S. And currently we are the phrase gla phrased glaze, which translates into Dwarvish as so can fickod. We should be the ace um Let's be the ace aces. Which is Alak Alak. We are the Alak Alaks. Suits me fine. Pretty easy. Right, done. And then E to embark. Are you sure? Are you sure? I haven't derped up too hard, have I? Seems fine to me. Yes or no? Yes. Let's go. You've arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all Stegetkosh. Stegeth Koshoff. Koshoff? Stegeth Koshoff. Oh, bloody hell. Weather, the glory of our original home that we left. There are almost no supplies left, except for all the wine. But without stout labor comes. Uh, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Whether by the bolt, well we don't have any bolts. Plow or hook, well we have some 
well, we don't have plows, but we, we can farm with our hands, it's fine. Provided for your dwarfs, you are expecting a supply caravan just before the winter entombs you. But it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the dingoes get hungry. Oh god, it doesn't mean that there are dingoes in the area that might eat us. A new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place. Alak alak, ace aces, strike the earth. Enter. Ta-da! And this is what Dwarf Fortress looks like when you're inside it. So, K to look around. Oop. Oop. Dwarf Fortress had stopped working. Ah, it's saving. That is why. It's saving on the Embark, which isn't a thing in normal. I think you have to have... There we go. If you look in options, it'll be... Save on... Settings. Initial save, yep. Save as soon as you embark. Right, so we are here. We've saved. Let's look around. So, K brings up your cursor, and you can look around and you can see we've got dense open space, open space. That's because we're up one level. Let's just have a quick look around and we can get back. Holding shift will mean you go around faster. So, do we have an actual river of any kind here? No. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. I do like a good river. It's a good source of water. These standing pools are not as good. Um, are we starting on a mountain top? No. We could build into the side of this fortress. You can go up and down, by the way, by using uh, shift, comma, and period. So the uh, the forwards and backwards arrows. That would be underground. And that would be the top of the map. Now, one thing we could do is we could dig into the side of here. Uh, build a proper little dwarvish home with an entrance and everything. But the, the the easiest for beginners, and especially on a map like this where we don't actually have that much mountain to delve into, uh, the easiest way to start yourself off is to actually just build straight down from where you start. So what we're going to do is I think we'll start um, here-ish. We'll dig straight down and then we'll get going, right? This has been episode naught. I'm actually going to start the actual building and stuff in episode one. And then we can get going. I will try to explain everything as we go. And if you know you fancy following along and stuff, then uh, all the best to you. And I hope your dwarves survive for probably longer than mine are going to, considering I am in a nice untamed wild area. Let's have a quick look around before we get going. Um, right, that's all our guys. Hmm. I hope things go well. Anyway, I've been Andrew Lissim, and as always, stay shiny. If you liked this episode, please remember to like, and if you want to actually, you know, follow the adventures of our dwarfs of Ace Aces, uh, like a luck, then, um, well, subscribe, if you're not, because that way you can follow them. Makes sense, right? Stay shiny again.